Hello everybody, Ben Rogers here, the Raptors Digest, reacting to some terrible news for the Toronto Raptors and their star Pascal Siakam Riker. Obviously, it's been a tough past year for Siakam, was having his career season, a pandemic hits, he doesn't touch a basketball for three months. For three months, Riker comes into the bubble, looks like rookie Siakam, really not, that's an exaggeration, but not playing at the level he was prior to the bubble, and then a shortened offseason, doesn't really get into that rhythm, starts to get his game going a little bit, hit with health and safety protocols, he'll hit with a shoulder issue at the end of the year, and that was something we thought would be minor, would be kind of tinkered around with, we thought it might have even been exaggerated, because obviously we were playing the kazoos out in the sunrise of the season, but... Nonetheless, it ended up being a much more serious issue. He's having surgery. He just recently had surgery. And Shams came out and reported it that he had surgery and he's going to be out for probably five months, which would take us right into the start of next season. Riker, what are your initial reactions to this for Pascal Siakam? Ben, that three months of not talking, about, touching the basketball, that was completely his doing. And what a mistake that was. Yep. <laughs> that's completely on him a paid nba player not practicing on his own time right not giving him the pass on that one this one obviously you need to take care of your body you need to try to make your career as long as possible so you can keep making that money so this is probably a long-term move for him but it sucks it's terrible for the toronto raptors because you can almost guarantee that he's going to come out slow he's going to come out on limited minutes on load management uh, a term that's haunting the raptors i guess to this day so it we're going to need other guys to step up and if it's any indication from this most recent season that's easier said than done ben yeah certainly and it's just tough because pascal siakam obviously is currently the guy we expect to be that number one option now raptors fans fandom people have essentially said Siakam's not that guy. You guys are crazy for consistently bringing that up. He's trash. He's this. He's that. No. He was our best player last season when he was out there. In terms of the defense is always focused in on him. They're locked in on him and he's doing the best he can with everything that's gone on to try and overcome that. And obviously he's missed some clutch plays. Isn't really that natural of a guy. It's, this was his second real season being in that position. So with the short off season last year, obviously... Siakam, with exception of that shortened season last year, Siakam has came in year after year, season after season, better, more improved, adding things to his bag. But unfortunately, the shortened years, it's it just didn't work out. And that makes sense. A lot of people were seeing that across the league. But we said, especially with the early exit for the Toronto Raptors, if Pascal Siakam could get into the Rico Hines gyms and get those scrimmages going, work on his moves, work on that three-point jump shot, work on that handle, maybe even a bit of passing, he could come back and just become way more well-rounded and potentially grow into that guy that, even if it's not the true number one Kawhi Leonard-esque number one option, but a guy that maybe you could rely upon a little bit more and then with the um, emergence of OG Ananobi, Fred Van Vliet obviously had a great season last year. Gary Trent Jr., he's still a little bit of a, a basket case for this team. We don't know because he was horrible off the bench and great when he was starting. But if Siakam came back a little bit more well-rounded, this team, even if we don't make any major additions, definitely could uh, not be playing the kazoos into next season. I'll only half heartedly play that animation right there. But this is just a heartbreaker because you're taking away that potential development this offseason. Yeah. The MIP curse, Ben. The MIP curse, Julius Randle. We're lucky that Bam Adebayo didn't get the most improved player. Pascal Siakam. What's happened to these power forwards that have an incredible year? They have their breakout year. Very easy for us to point out again, him stepping up to be that number one option. But we say time and time again, he's an energy guy. Mm -hmm. So taking that away, not having fans, all of that. But you need to practice. You need to practice to get better. And when you take a step back, right, having five months off where he's probably not going to be touching the basketball, especially if it's a shoulder injury, then it's going to take him a long time. And I want to point out, too, the only stat that improved, actually, because he was 45, or well, let me see here. What are his splits? About 46, 29, almost 30 from three. 
and 83% from the free throw. So free throw shooting was the only stat that improved, but still 21 points per game as a starter, 21 and seven rebounds. Again, what, what are those similar stat lines? Kristaps Porzingis, who we've said absolutely sucks now, right? Colin Sexton, who we're saying he doesn't deserve a max contract. That's his stat line, right? It seems like guys are able to squeeze out 20 points, 20 points and eight rebounds, 20 points, five assists pretty easily if you're a good starting caliber player. But as a number one option, it just doesn't cut it. So what's more, Ben, and we're going to have another full video on this, Chris Boucher might not even be with us. So who's going to take that load off of Pascal Siakam now at that four or five spot? In terms of scoring, because if we keep around Ken Birch, if we maybe land Rashawn Holmes, those guys aren't scoring big. So where's our scoring going to come from? You're leaking all our future videos, Riker. You're you're sneaking those all in. But I, I see the thing about it is Siakam will likely be back for the start of the season. Five months, that takes you about to mid-October. Say they're resting him a little bit or it's a, you know, they want to be very careful because obviously... The last resort is surgery. You don't want, if you can rehab without surgery, you do that for sure. But obviously it's come to this, so maybe they take a little bit longer than they expect. Maybe that's factored into the five months that Shams has reported. But I don't necessarily think there will be a need to really pick up the slack from Siakam or see uh, or bring in a power forward or something to replace Siakam for the first two months of the season because surely we don't want to get off to a bad start this year. Hustle man chap. Hustle man chap, bring him back. But uh, Portland Trailblazers fans were really very low on uh, Hustle man chap because he was getting a few minutes. They they weren't liking, they weren't vibing with him, but we'll, we'll gladly take him back. But we'll talk about all those offseason moves later on. And I don't think that's super necessary, but... I think it's more so you're really banking on a Trent, an OG, even a Fred Van Vliet to take another step forward in their scoring abilities, right? We know what they can do on the defensive end. We know what they can do as complementary players, but obviously we were hoping for that jump with Pascal Siakam. And who knows, maybe he does it. I'm not, I'm not actually sure which shoulder it is. So if it's right, his right hand, get those set shots going, right? If it's his left... Yeah, we all know Siakam can certainly work on that left hand. So there's definitely stuff he's still capable of doing this offseason. But right now for Siakam, it's a lot of game-oriented things. Decision-making when there's two guys on you. And that stuff you really can't practice unless you're playing. So five months of watch and tape, Ben. Five months of getting those coaching, building that IQ. Yeah. So, but like, it's tough. Five months off is tough. It's very tough. So maybe we should t tamper our expectations for Siakam, especially for the start of next season when he comes back, gets into a rhythm of things. Because we all know that the not just Raptors fans, but the entire NBA loves to clown Pascal Siakam. I'm, I'm going to give everyone the Damari Carroll gold star on that. Uh, a future gold star for everyone that's uh, clowning Siakam after he's probably not, not played for a long time. But we might have to see a, a Chris Boucher step up, right? We might have to see some of these players come in, but... I don't necessarily think any roster moves will be necessary. No. Well, we can put to bed at least the trade Pascal Siakam chatter because if we didn't want to trade him low after a season, we're certainly not going to trade him low off of an injury or uh, surgery. And so it's questionable as to the level that he's going to be able to come back in. So we'll see. Anyways, Ben, I don't think we need to go too long with this one unless you had anything else to bring up. I had one question to you. Just a final, like a, a, a end of the world of the Raptors world, like our, our final two minute alarm where the the alarm goes off and all that. The dinosaurs are running out. But just say this shoulder injury just completely messes up Siakam's form. We've seen injuries like this happen to players. Markel Fultz is the, the most recent example of a guy whose form was just completely destroyed after a, a shoulder injury. Uh, ra former Raptor Landry Fields was a three-point shooter for the New York Knicks back in the day, came to our team. I don't know if it was necessarily a shoulder or an elbow, but he had a bit of nerve damage in his arm. Do you do you think there is a, a scenario where this could lead to just a much worse version of Pascal Siakam? And if that's the case, do you have any uh, push this red button break in, in terms of emergency players the Raptors should target or something like that if that's the case? 
you said you didn't want to bring this to offseason talk, but Ben, I think instead of looking for a power forward that's a scorer or perimeter scorer, I'd maybe even look to go the other way and say maybe we bring in a guy who can at least score in the paint a little bit, play a bit of inside out basketball, let OG, Gary Trent Jr., Fred Van Vliet, let those be the perimeter guys and don't okay. bog it down. Or Sorry? Kate Cunningham. Tank for a pick. <laughs> We'll see what happens. I, I don't want to go too panicky here, so. Yeah, no, it's a it's a tough situation. Hopefully everything's all good. I just wanted to throw that out there because that could be one route, one possible dimension that we end up in as uh, as Raptors fans, followers. But let us know what you guys think of this, this injury. How will it affect the Toronto Raptors going forward? Let us know in the comment section below. You're the best to make this far. Check out the Twitter, the Instagram, all that cool stuff. Right here, give me last words on Pascal Siakam. Nothing left to say about this man. He shows up or he doesn't, Ben.